Hi and welcome back to Cheeky Crypto. My name is Nick and today guys we're going to be jumping down into the world of Algorand to take a look at what's been going on in the 2021 bull market, what's going on in the 2022 bear market and you know what the future might hold for Algo. Where does that future look? Is it going to be super bullish? Are we looking at 100x or is things a little bit more uh, calmer? Maybe only 20, 30x. That's the kind of mission today. We're going to be jumping down into the charts, taking a good look at what is going on with our grand. As I get into this video, if you find it useful and informative, smash the like button. I do appreciate that. If you're new to the channel, why not subscribe, tap the bell, select all the notifications, and in doing so, you will be kept up to date with absolutely everything that we do here at Cheeky Crypto. And if you haven't yet joined us in Discord, guys, you are missing a trick. Linked in the description down below, it is the place to be. It's the first place we go to to notify you of the ins and the outs of the crypto space before it kind of reaches the mainstream Twitter, Instagram, YouTube channels. If you want to be ahead of the curve, join us down in Discord, linked in the description below. Okay, let's uh, let's go ahead and jump on down into into a little bit of Algorand. Let's start uh, just here. Obviously, this is just the website. Um, there isn't terribly too much I want to talk fundamentally uh, about the project. I am always like a lot of these projects disappointed by the level of marketing um you know but Algorand has done some interesting things recently I'm not going to go into the, all of the ins and the outs of it I think many people who are probably watching this video already know what Algorand has been up to recently we're here to talk about the price action though and specifically taking a look at where things went and where they are right now and what that might mean in the future um so I'm just going to draw a few lines on here right in order to be able to accurately kind of get an idea say accurately obviously it's a prediction so it's going to be elements of it is not so accurate um but we're going to be taking a look and give you my thoughts of where i think things could go we have to understand first of all where it was okay so we're going to highlight a couple of things we obviously have the all-time high up here this was uh, basically the birth of uh, of this chart on binance um on the 22nd of june 2019 this is three dollars 44 so there is a pretty much a downward slope and we end up going down into the all-time low uh, down here. This was basically the 13th of March 2020. We all know what was happening there. So we kind of have these two dashed lines on the chart here, right? We can see that we were trying to trading sideways between the two of them, essentially, right? But it was some interesting kind of gains in between. If we take this low point down here, if I can get it, there we go, and I take it up to the high that is right here, we can see that we moved up 3,000% in gains. Now, that is in incredibly poor performance when we consider even things like um, Ethereum went up 5,000%. Okay, so we know that it's underperformed against Ethereum and Ethereum wasn't exactly a great performer. So we want to be a little bit cautious here. Okay, so we understand that it hasn't performed overly well in 2021 uh, during that kind of bullish time. And since then, we have actually pulled back reasonably well as well. So uh, at the moment, we are tracking a low of about 92% from this level here. Okay, not even from the all-time high. If we track it from the all-time high, we're rocking about 93%. Okay, so we've come down pretty well. Um, so let's go ahead and take that off. And let's actually think about, okay, well, if this is the structure, what does that mean? What does it tell us? Well, it does look like we had this interesting move to the upside here looks like a zigzag pattern to me on the C wave um, and not so much on the initial A wave. So let me show you. Um, so from this bottom area here to here, okay, we have this kind of structure going on. Uh, and I think we are looking at, if I can get it up there, like a structure like this. Now, the issue, obviously, if people were feeling a, maybe a little bit on the bullish side for Algorand, uh, let me just pull this up here. Okay, and we're not talking fundamental stuff either, guys, right? But we are just talking about how people have traded it. So for those who do not know, I am releasing an Elliott Wave Theory course. And you can actually see this here is our one-to-one. -one. So we might actually have a little bit more of a, a double three or something like that going on. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm building a course on Elliott Wave Theory. That will be released soon so you guys can get an understanding, a little bit deeper of the understanding anyway, on what I think is going on here when it comes to um, the structures so you get a better idea idea better understanding of it but for now if you do join us down in discord uh, there is a pdf with 181 pages that you can kind of get your hands on and start to understand some of these structures now elliott way theory is tracking people's behavior um, so by tracking people's behavior we understand you know why they're buying and why they're selling uh, in relation to fibonacci based numbers so 
when we take a look at this chart, it's, it's actually tracking people's behavior, right? It's not just looking at pretty patterns on a chart, for example. So there is a lot of psychology to this. Um, so here we can see that we actually had three waves coming up to the one to one. And this one right here comes up to the 1.236. I'm happy to actually put that on there just to save the hassle of having to draw up lots of different substructures. Uh, although it does look like we have some kind of three wave structure right inside there as well. OK, but we're going to just call it an overextension going up to that 1.236. OK, now obviously there's a, a couple of things here that we should be uh, concerned with right one obviously we did not come up into a new all-time high okay this basically allows us to take a look at this structure coming down this is a potential uh, counter move to a bigger trend to the downside now obviously we don't have a lot of information here so there's two ways of looking at this like I said at the beginning of this we're kind of trading sideways between these two dashed lines right the all-time high and the all-time low now the bearish person might want to take a look at it and think here's a really interesting structure and we're due to come down just a fraction lower than March 2020. OK, and I will give you this scenario so that we're all aware and we're all on the same page, right, of uh, where this thing can go. And this is just a bearish scenario. There's a bullish version of this as well, which we'll go through in a second. Um, so don't think I'm just hating on Algorand. Uh, I'm not. Uh, but we can see down here we have the potential to go maybe as low as this one to one uh, at 8.27 so a new all-time low okay so that's a possibility and we'll we'll talk about that um as uh, as we talk about the bear market scenario in a second okay and um, so at the moment we are we haven't quite caught up to there okay so i'm going to pop this right there as that dashed line just for our low point okay uh, so there's that as a theoretical right we've got this kind of abc structure potentially going to the downside the bullish variant to this though is that we take this high from 2021 and we take this low from 2020 get it there we go and we move this over to a low point that's yet to be determined we'll talk about that in a second and then you can see a potential new all-time high and that's the bullish variation to this okay so we can see this coming here here and then here for example okay and we're going to talk about that one in this video okay now if we do come down lower then this structure to a new all-time high is invalid and there will be a new structure to take us up into a new pattern which we don't know what that looks like because we're not there yet okay so i'm just going to park this fibonacci retracement tool just out of the way okay we'll come back to that in a second so let's talk about this bear market right we've been coming down quite a bit we've had this uh, interesting kind of move here let's go ahead and focus in on this okay so we're going to grab another dash line i'm going to throw this right here uh, which is the 18th of june 2022 this is basically where a lot of people were thinking that we were in some kind of bullish um, momentum to the upside and essentially here was uh, the bottom for bitcoin for example this is what a lot of people were talking about um, and then we'll going to the moon right the new bull market had started right that's kind of what people were thinking uh, obviously i i look at this differently than many others apparently um, i see this as a series of higher highs and higher lows and these things typically always break to the downside not to the upside so uh, that's one way of looking at it also elliott wave theory uh, dictates a trend as a five wave move and yet what we've actually got going on inside here is all this overlapping structure which is an invalidation of an impulsive structure meaning there was no trend to the upside instead all of this is corrective and then we broke to the downside here now why is this important well this is important because we had this stopping area just here um, and you know we take a look at the structures and what do we actually see well we see a pretty much an overlapping kind of movement uh, in places okay so from the top here though it does look like we had maybe a diagonal start right here we bounced up into a wet some kind of wave two we have some kind of wave three here and then a four and then we looks like we have one two three four and then five coming there okay so this basically gives us our five wave movement but this area is of interest to me because i don't think it's as clean cut as we would like it to be and the reason for this is we'd have to have minimum expectations being met for wave three okay it's not allowed to be the shortest wave for example right now if i come on over to here and i put this on we can see that we did not hit our 1.618 minimum expectation. And in fact, we are 
only barely longer than wave one. And, you know, that's not really allowed in uh, traditional Elliott wave theory. So, you know, I wouldn't actually want to consider this a, a movement like that. OK, so instead we have to start thinking that this may be more as a WXYXZ structure. And we start stringing together those five wave movements and we start seeing zigzag patterns instead. OK, and I think that's a better fit for what is going on here. OK, so basically this means that we come down to this low point in June and we trade sideways and now we can start to come on down. Essentially, this would mean that we are either in some kind of final movement to the downside, like a Z wave, uh, which is definitely possible, or we have that more bearish scenario. Both of these are still technically possible, right? Where we take this high point just here, we move this over to this bounce point, and here you can see it could go down to as low as 4.19 cent. Now, we do have to acknowledge that that existing low point that we had marked up here earlier at uh, 8.27 um, cent, that particular area is of interest because that one could indicate to us that actually that's a 702, 786. There's a lot of resistance here um, or support to be found in that particular range. Could be interesting. So our bearish scenario is does have a lot of grounds here to think that maybe even on a macro scale we were seeing it but even on this micro scale we are also seeing this potential move to the downside now like i said that's a super bearish one so i don't want to focus too much on that but just bear it in mind it is possible we don't want to be too bearish but we do want to kind of keep it things as, as realistic as we possibly can here for our grant in order to allow us to get that kind of upper end uh you know kind of price prediction and kind of pricing area right so what do we see in here? Well, it does look like we have to have this additional leg to the downside. Uh, and if we go ahead and think about how this is currently forming out, I would say we are probably looking at it like this. OK, and if I expand that just a fraction more, grab the fibs, throw a Fibonacci retracement tool on here, throw it down to the lows. And here we can see maybe 16.36 cent. Uh, and that there could mark the end of a Z wave. And if that does mark the end of the Z wave, that there could be where we actually start to see that next level of appreciation for Algorand. Um, so obviously that is a bit of a stretch, right? We've got to see a lot of things there. But if that is the case, our bullish scenario would put us into a scenario where we see about $5.10 in the next cycle to the upside on this one-to-one -one ratio approximately. So just kind of keep these things uh, you know, in mind. There's a couple of things that are going on here. This val is only valid OK, this particular structure is only valid as long as we do not cross this low point down here from March 2020 at 9.58 cent. Anything lower than that, this invalid is invalidated. This is not a possible option unless we were in some other kind of corrective structure, uh, which would probably have uh, been a running flat or a expanding or irregular flat corrections. But those would be something that we'd have to address closer to the time. And um, so just kind of think it in mind that if we do drop down lower than that, that 9.58 cent, then this isn't valid. And instead, we should be thinking about that more bearish option. And we have no visibility over what happens afterwards, as in they should go up, but we have no idea where until we actually start counting out the new structures that emerge. So when it comes to Algorand here, I do want to kind of give you a bit of an idea. I think there is this uh, possibility that we can see a $5 Algorand in the future. Um, but there's also the possibility that actually things could be dramatically different and we invalidate the structures and that we can, of course, see a new structure go Going up higher or even lower than $5.10. So kind of keep those things in mind. I wanted to give people a bit of an idea um, and into the world of Algorand. There's a whole host of fantastic fundamental things that are going on. You should definitely dive into that. But when it comes to um, you know, looking at the structures as they sit today, it has been a pretty poor performer so far, and it doesn't look like it has huge potential to the upside either, uh, at least not even under this bullish structure. We are, of course, talking at around another 3,000%, and you can get better gains from other projects. So it's one of those. You're either going to be really emotionally attached to Algorand, or you're going to look at maybe a few other projects and think, actually, I'm going to invest in those because they give me more bang for my buck. I'm going to leave this video right there though let me know your thoughts in the comments below if you found it useful and informative smash the like button i do appreciate that if you're new subscribe and if you haven't yet joined us in discord links in the description below guys until the next one have a fantastic day